people are destroyed for what? For the lack of knowledge. If we're educated, we know how to deal with this situation in a better than, we, than, what we, than what we have been dealing with. But the sad thing about it, more than anything to me, and I'm just going to be honest with my word and people that is in here, because I think each and every one of us want to know the truth. This governor has taken over this situation. I would have never allowed this governor to take over this. I would have told this governor from day one, when Washington and Lansing were squeezing his tail about what he's done, and when he became apologetic, the first thing I would have done is told him to take his state receivership and his unconstitutional emergency manager law, take it out of our city. Let's do that first. Allow elected officials who were elected to do their job, because apparently when the state took over, they didn't have our best interests at all. And they proved that. So if they proved that, and he was so, he was so honest saying that he's apologetic, then if you're apologetic, show it in action. Take your unconstitutional law, out of our city and allow us to take over our own city. But, um, but unfortunately, and I'm just telling you from how I view it as an elected official, you have to take it for whatever it's worth. But in my mind and how I look at it from the inside, it looks like to me this government is taking over the situation. You're fixing two houses on the west side, two houses on the east, two houses on the south. You can't fix, <laughs> you can't fix pipes like that. Because all of the homes are connected to one, now you can buy a lot of time. All of the pipes are connected to one water, the main pipe. So if you got a house on the left side and a house on the right side that's not fixed, and you're the only house in the middle that's fixed, then it's a great chance that that house in the middle is going to get in the house, even though they have new pipes as well. I hope I'm making sense. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But fix it too in different geographical areas that don't make sense. What you should have done is start fixing in front of the schools first. Because right now they're talking about extending the time for the children in the school. Well, you can't extend the time with the children in the school and the children are the most susceptible ones that's going to contract whatever this water may produce. Fix the pipes in front of the school first. I don't need this. Fix the pipe in front of the school first. It's not that many. It's not that many. Out of all the houses that they can fix, all of the schools could have been fixed. And then you work outside and go block for block, not house for house. You go block for block and make sure one block is done. Then you go to another block and you say one block at a time. But you do the schools first so that children don't make excuses why they shouldn't be in school. Parents don't make excuses. But most important, they are assured great health and good education, all at the same time. But you can't fix two houses on Patterson, and then two houses on Niagara, and then two houses on West Alma. It don't work like that. But I'm just giving you just a little synopsis of what's going on. Because if I don't give it to you, then I am in remiss. And I don't want to be remiss without giving you the education that you may not hear about down at City Hall. But I'm telling you, this governor has actually taken over. He's never came and talked to City Council. City Council has never sat and talked to this governor. Only people talk to this governor is the mayor and the concerned pastors. He's never sat with the legislative body. I just need you to know this. I really do. Because if I don't tell you this, you will never know. Because in some of your minds, you will think some of city council has sat down and talked to this governor. It's not true. None of us. He's never once. He snuck in and out. He comes in all the time. But council never get a chance to speak to him. Never. And so I ask myself, why? Why is the most intelligent question? If we are the legislative body, let me give you some, other, some more education. Nine city councils, based on the chart, never forget this. Nine city council as a body is more powerful than the mayor because we are the legislative body. We was taught this when we went through training in Franklin Move at the Michigan Municipal League. So what that means is that the legislative body should be involved in everything. Well, council don't have their power. Only person got their power is the mayor. We asked the Transition Advisory Board yesterday which is the five appointed, unconstitutional, five appointed,
that if council say yes, they can say no, and they no go. But council, I, the president, the vice president, ask for our power back. The administration didn't want us to have our power back. Well, let me tell you this. If we had our power back, we in control of the money. We do the checks and the balances. But if we don't have our power back and only the mayor has her power back, then who controls the money? We can't do no checks and balances because we don't have, we're not a legislative body. We don't have the power. So I just need you to know this. I don't know how you may feel. I mean, you know. But I just want you to be educated and know this because a lot of times people don't know what's going on at City Hall. And I know a lot of you are first rate. You are. I'm first rate. My wife got marks all on her body. We don't know what that is. So I'm first rate, and I live right on Patterson Street. I don't live nowhere else. I live on Patterson. I only got one filter just on my sink. I, I don't have nothing on my shower. I just get in and I pray. I don't know if I'm affected or not. I really don't. Cancer is hereditary in my family. Everybody in my family dies from cancer. And so I'm just saying this as a, as, 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 as a city councilman that I share your pain too. And any and everything that I can do in bringing some resolve to your pain, I don't have a problem doing that. And I would do that more than I would do it for myself. But you have to understand that something is not right in this city. Something is not right in this city. I'm just being honest with y'all. Now, I don't know if that may cost me something because I always learn that every great leader Every great leader that's a real leader, the wages of his leadership sometimes has been his life. I'm okay with that. Because I'm exposed. Something ain't right. And you guys know that. You guys know that. Something isn't right. But it takes us. It takes us to make it right. Can't be me. I'm just a voice. But the power lies in you. Don't lie in me. I can speak like I'm speaking now, and I be speaking by myself. But they know I know the truth. This is why they marginalize me. If you guys can remember, and they silence me, when I was on the Steve Harvey show, and I'm just telling you this, to be really honest with you guys, my wife heard them tell them to cut me, cut his part. But they left a little bit. But the part that they gave y'all was confusing. I gave them the full meat. They want to make this a college city. They really do. They want to make this a college city, but how can you make this a college city when you got 42% of the people in this city poor, you got 40% poverty, I mean, uh, read below a sixth grade level, and you got 40% or more with felonies on their record. How can you make this a college city unless you allow this to take place? Now, be mindful, be mindful of this. People think that they're trying to run us all out. Well, I hear you. But people think that they're trying to run all of us out. Well, let me tell you this. They just setting it up so that we can start running out. And those that stay, they'll build around you, make your living conditions so expensive that you will just leave anyway. They just setting it up so that we can just go. They know all of us not going to go. They know that. But they'll set it up so that we'll get to going and we won't change our mind because the most powerful thing in this world Never forget this, is a made up mind. And once our mind is made up, even if they fix it, people's mind already made up, say, man, I'm just gonna go anyway. Because this crisis has affected us economically, educationally, if it, it, it affects us on our home, the value of our home, the depreciate. You, some people wanna leave and can't even sell their home. I mean, you guys gotta really understand what I'm telling you. Believe me or not, like me or not, but please understand what I'm saying. Don't, just take the message. Something ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't right. And, it, and, it ain't, and I cannot finish expressing that, but it ain't my right. Mic one, mic check two. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. All hearing. All right. So I want to start this process going, and, and I hope that you guys understood what I was saying. I really do. It just ain't right in the city. But we got to believe in God. Because at the end of the day, man and woman will fail you, but God will always protect you. He will take your best, because believe this, no matter how bad and gloomy it looks, 
Children are affected. What did God tell the, the disciples when they wouldn't let the children in? He said, until you become one like them, you will never inherit the kingdom of God. God took interest in children and women more than he took interest in any creation that he created. And children are being affected and people want to do things that is not right on the expense of the children that suffer. God will extend his mercy. Please believe that. God is going to come in. He's going to come in at a time when we say, man, I never imagined. But God is going to make this right. He's going to make this right. Because I'm telling you, right now, as of today, it ain't right. And so I took the initiative to do this, and I'm hoping that everybody gets something out of it. So let me go and get the people so that they can come and give you what you came here for. And uh, let's get it started, okay? Thank you very much. speaker, a man very passionate about this problem and has done so much with the community already. Um, so we're glad to have him uh, here and, and, and welcoming us. Um, we're going to get to a uh, video here very shortly that we shot a few weeks ago, actually, probably two weeks ago here in Flint. Um, and then we're going to have a, a little uh, press briefing and then a a demonstration of the water row, water purifiers that we have here. Uh, but at first I want to just, just have the team come up and introduce themselves. Uh, this, is, this is the CEO of water row. He is the brains behind this, this reverse osmosis water filtering system that is far beyond anything that's ever been, been, been created. And I'm going to have Joe, introduce himself and the rest of the team here. Hello everyone, my name is Nikki Joe and I'm the founder of WaterO. This is a reverse water, water purifier we create and we will demonstrate it later. Hi, my name is Ken Surratt, I'm the founder of Water is Life. Uh, we're involved in water purification in 40 countries around the world, uh, helping uh, transform communities. We are here to help partner with Water O to bring uh, clean water to the good people of Flint. Hello everyone, my name is Sumit Farhad and I'm a marketing consultant with Water O. Corey Smith from Flint H2O and uh, Corey O Water Solutions. I'm going to be working with uh, Water O uh, education and uh, distribution of the product. Okay, great. This, this is, we're going to get to the video. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very short, but it's, it's the people of Flint speaking to us about the problem and what they're hoping the solutions are to the, to the water problem here. Just having lead in the water would be a big problem. It's, it's a terrible problem. 
uh, on a daily basis. My daily routine has changed. Something as simple as taking a bath or a shower has become just um, something tr terrible thing for us. Cook dinner and wash chicken and pork and you constantly opening up cases of, of water, you know. It just became just, it's just horrible, you know. Uh, we are afraid to get in the bath, afraid to get in the water. Sure that my niece don't use the water. 
four different filters of the highest quality color. That's four unique layers of purification to every single drop of water. Installation required. I wish you could see the videos on a high definition screen. <laughs> They're really, really amazing videos. Well, I'd like to introduce, um, she's an attorney, uh, Ms. Esther, and she wants to give you some understanding of some of your uh, legalities and some of your ways that how you can defend yourself and fight for yourself. So Ms. Esther, can you please come up and give a, a presentation or a synopsis of uh, who you are and what you stand for. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, I have been asked to come and talk to you about uh, a little bit about myself and the work that I do and that my law firm does, and also to tell you a little bit about us and what you, uh, what legal remedies that you might have as a result of what's happening here in this community. So let me tell you first, my name is Esther Berezovsky and I'm a partner in the law firm of Williams Cooper Berezovsky. We are, our offices are in Philadelphia and in New Jersey, but my practice is a national practice. We do environmental um, cases involving representing communities all over the country and we've been doing it for decades. Uh, some of, uh, I brought actually some of the cases you may have heard of, some not, but literally from the East Coast, West Coast, and in the middle of the country. One of the cases you know, a few years ago was a case called Tom's River, where we represented a community of, where there was also municipal water contamination in which there was a children's cancer cluster. And it was called Tom's River. There's actually a book that's been written about the case. It won a Pulitzer Prize. Last year I brought a copy just so you, to show you. But, um, it's <clears throat> what happened there was that the municipal water supply was contaminated and what we did there uh, was to represent those individuals that were harmed. In this community, what's happened here is somewhat unique. It's not unique in terms of the community's municipal water supply being contaminated, but what's unique is that it was done by the government and by the regulatory agency and those people that are charged with protecting you. And so there are some unique um, and challenging legal issues, but we are confident and we already we represent a number of people. I actually was contacted by people in this community some months back because of the work that we've done um, to, to represent them. Uh, so there, the cases, that have been filed and that we're filing are against the government, but also potentially some private parties. There are many different types of claims. Let me back up a minute. One of the things that I do when I represent a community or people in a community is not only to represent them in court and give their claims a voice and advocate for those claims, but also to work with people in meetings, getting together to figure out what is available, what kind of, not only remedies are available, but what kind of services are available. How can you organize to better advocate for yourselves to deal with some of the issues? Because as a lawyer, and filing a claim on your behalf, whether it's for property damage, whether it's for personal injuries, whether it's for monitoring of illnesses, it's still, that's, those are money damages. But in addition to that, there are things, because the problem is ongoing, not, I understand they now say, well, the water's testing cleaner. But I wonder how many of you actually believe that? I'm sure not many. And 
one of the other things that we do is to try to give people information about what you can, you know, what, what you can do to help. For example, how many of you thought that boiling your water would make it safer? Anybody? At any point, some of you. Right, because a lot of people think if you boil the water, it will make it safer. Not when there's heavy metals involved. So there are a lot of, you know, things, there's a lot of information, there are a lot of services available. There's also just the trauma of living through something like this. And I want to just tell you a little bit about me, because even though I live in Philadelphia, I have a history here in Michigan. I spent 11 years in Michigan. I lived in Detroit. I went to Wayne State University. And in my prior life, I was a psychologist. And what I did as a psychologist is, it's not working. Maybe I don't need you all hear me. Okay, is that better? Okay, all right. So what I did actually, the work I did was working with communities that were traumatized as a result of a disaster that was man-made or man-created. For example, like Three Mile Island, or in Missouri, Times Beach, where the whole town was flooded with dioxin. I wasn't a lawyer then, but I was a psychologist that worked with the community to deal with the trauma of those experiences and evaluating those, both for the community, but also for the claims that they have. And I, I lived in Michigan, I went, went to school here, I, did, I worked in community mental health for years, and then I moved back east, and then the reason I went to law school and became a lawyer, and that's now 25 years ago, was to do environmental work, to do this kind of work, to represent communities in doing this kind of work. So one of the things I would say to you before I get to what claims you have is that regardless of whether you, who you decide, if you decide to bring claims, and you all have, there are certain claims you all have, all of you, and some, you know, some of you have and they're different, and how we treat them is different. We, represent people individually. And each one of you and each one of your families has individual and personal claims. And when we file claims on your behalf, if you retain us, it's for your individual claims as opposed to class actions. There are some claims that we do bring, we do class actions, but on very specific issues, which really do apply to everybody. Most don't, because you each, each family, each individual is different whether you rent a home, own a home, whether you have lead in your blood, whether you don't, whether you have had rashes. I understand you saw some video a little while ago. We were, uh, we were going to bring, um, I think, the dermatologist to talk about some of the skin rashes and some of the, the problems that the water has caused. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here. That's why the, you, they, you saw the video, but not the person. He, was, he apologizes. He was unable to get here. Um, but anyway, so in terms of the, what I wanted to say to you is regardless of what you do, make sure that you talk to people who have done this work and, you know, understand what the issues are. So what kind of claims are there? Well, one of the claims is the quality of life, okay? The quality of life damages every one of you who lives in this community who can't drink the water who has to cook with bottled water, who can't take showers or bathe in the way that you would expect to be able to do in your own home, has been impacted. The quality of your life has been impacted for a lot of people. I mean, they're not delivering, as I understand it, they're not delivering bottled water to your homes. You have to go and get it. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Now, for some people, that is really tough. Maybe you don't have a car, maybe, maybe you're elderly, maybe you don't feel well. That's hard. Even getting it from downstairs to upstairs can be difficult. So the quality of life claims are something that everybody has, that all of you have. There are property damage claims. Now, for those of you who own property, the devaluation of property based on these issues, based on you know, not having potable water, not having water that you can drink, that necessarily, even if you were to be able to sell your property, it's not going to be for what the market value is, because who's going to buy it for the market value when you don't have drink, clean drinking water. So you have property damages, not only the devaluation, but there are other types of property damages. There are personal injuries. So many of you have had 
many people I've spoken to have had skin rashes. Um, there are people who have Legionnaire's disease. There are people who have been, many people have been diagnosed with pneumonia. That not everybody who has been diagnosed with pneumonia might have had Legionnaire's disease, but some people may have because the symptoms are similar and there may have been misdiagnosis. Those are all things that when people retain us, what we do is ask them to, to fill out detailed questionnaires. We go through a questionnaire with everybody and get all of the information from every one of you to the extent that you retain us and figure out what are the claims. Not everything that happens to you is related to the water, but there are a lot of medical issues that may be linked and that those need to be investigated. Unfortunately, Michigan is one of the few states that does not have Okay, it does not have something called medical monitoring. In most states, in environmental cases, there's a thing called medical monitoring for people who have been exposed and can prove and establish that there's been an exposure to a toxin. Medical monitoring for the kinds of illnesses that may result from that exposure is part of a legal claim that they have. Michigan does not allow for that. Now, there are other ways that characterize those damn those that kind of monitoring or surveillance. So I think that there are things that we can do because the exposure is you know clear. You've been exposed. The other thing about lead is I know some of you may have had your lead lead test uh, your blood tested. Some of you may not have. It's really important that everybody does get tested. Now, lead state, I, again, let me just say, as a disclaimer, I'm, I'm not a doctor, I am not a medical person, and I'm not a, a health, um, uh, you know, a health person. But as a lawyer and having done this kind of work for many, many years, lead stays in the body. It doesn't leave the body. It does leave the blood. So its presence in your blood may be 25 to 35 days. So just because you test negative now doesn't mean that you haven't had lead. It moves to bone. And right now, as far as I'm aware, and again, I'm not a physician, as far as I'm aware, the testing to establish whether you've been exposed other than blood is not, is not, has not moved beyond experimental phases. So that women of childbearing age have to be concerned because if you have lead, if you've been exposed and it's there, then that is something you need to be aware of and potentially concerned about. Um, so there are personal injuries, medical issues, property damage, quality of life, and what we do, what I do, what my firm does is evaluate those four people that retain us and then file suit. Uh, on their behalf to get them compensated for those losses. So, uh, what I want to just repeat is to the extent that you seek legal counsel from anyone, not necessarily with me, but whoever you go to, just make sure that this is an area of the law that they've practiced in, that they know about chemical exposure cases, how to litigate those, how to handle those, that they have the experts to work with that can properly assess the damage and also the remedies. So I invite you to ask me any questions if you have any. Are you licensed to practice in Michigan? I am not licensed to practice in Michigan, but I am working with lawyers in Michigan that are, who brought me here. And I will. The way it works legally is that when you work in another state, you get admitted to the bar for the purposes of that case. I work in a lot of states where I get admitted for the purpose of handling that case, but I am working with Michigan lawyers. Anybody else? How do these folks get in touch with you if they decide they want to? 
damage has done to their families and their homes and, families and their homes and their lives. And, go ahead. No, go ahead. How, how would they reach out to How would they reach out to me? If they chose to obtain, retain you as their, their representation legally. Sure. Um, I have cards here. I'm happy to give you cards. There's some folks. We have some questionnaires if people are interested in being uh, represented. We have questionnaires for people to fill out. But I have cards which I will put out on the table for people to take. It has my contact information. It also has our website, which I would invite you to look at because it will tell you about what we what we do. I mean, the environmental work we do. But I have cards, and that is uh, the best way. It has uh, phone numbers and email address and uh, website. And there's other information I think that some folks here have. Under personal injury, you mentioned three things. Legal
the whole community. So I don't know what a judge is going to do with that. The short answer is, the sooner the better. In terms of time of filing? Yes. Is it, is it all the same, the same money? It's the same. I mean, it would be within the same complaint. And if you, when you file a notice, you would say property and personal injury. You make it broad. You're fairly broad. So there's a notice of claim that has to be filed. That's different than filing a complaint. A complaint is a much more detailed, um, you know, uh, much more detailed about what your claims are, who it's against, and why. So there's the notice of claim just saying, I want to file, I'm going to file a claim, and that has to be done in Michigan. And then there's a complaint. Now, the complaint, that statute, I don't believe that has run, or, you know, I, I don't think that's an issue. But the notice of claim is something that needs to be filed right away. We're working with, with lawyers here in Michigan, and our firm is. Who are they in Michigan? We have a firm, it's called the Gugation Firm, and they're. I don't know if you know. They're actually, the Gugation Firm is in Bloomfield, and then there's Alan Kennedy, who was here a minute ago, and he's in Flint. Did he just walk out? He just walked out. And, um, Where's Kamila? There are two attorneys from Flint that we're working with, and they are right outside. And I'm happy to introduce you to them. Um, and then another firm that's in Bloomfield. Because a lot of times, uh, what's been going on lately, uh, fly by night. When you sign up, people have been signing up for different things, and you want to talk to an attorney or ask them different. I haven't signed up, but I'm just saying, they should uh, call the number. I understand that, and that's exactly why I said what I said earlier, which is make sure you bet and look up, look up the firms if, if you're signing up with somebody. Um, when, if you want to get in contact with me, you will have my number, and you can reach me. And and that, or lawyers at my firm, you know, we are reachable. That is what we do. Yeah. I, I heard the first part, but I didn't hear. You asked me what the cost would be? Okay. So we work on a contingent fee basis. I mean, people can pay us on an hourly basis, but clearly that doesn't make sense. Um, we work on a contingent fee ba basis, and what that means is you don't pay anything at all unless we recover money for you. We front the costs and we do the work. Once there is a recovery, either through a settlement or through a verdict, however it happens, then our fee is 30%, is a third. That is our fee. And the costs come, you know, come off the top. Well, our, and that, when I say costs, I want to be very clear, that's only out-of-pocket costs, not the cost of the lawyers or support staff. It's just money that we actually write checks for experts, depositions, things like that. That but that is not paid until unless and until you get money. I'm sorry. No, no cases have been thrown out so far. You mean here? No, 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 no. No, no. The they have not been thrown out. Absolutely not. The state has is trying 
to get the cases thrown out because they say these notices were not filed. It hasn't happened yet. The courts have not ruled on it yet. So how do you know which claim to file for? I mean, you don't know if it's ongoing or not. And then you're dealt with the issue. And you, you know, how short of, or how long a period of time do you have to wait to find out if your claim is going to be accepted or not? Okay. And are you affiliated with the Congress as people? One of the folks that you want? Yeah. Um, in terms of being thrown out, that is a technicality that they're trying to throw cases. It's not on the merits. It's not like saying these people don't have a claim. This is on a technicality because they didn't file a certain piece of paper. That these cases are not going to get thrown out. Now, I don't want to, I just, I don't want to mislead you. These cases were not thrown out. The state is trying to get them thrown out, but they're not. They have not been. What? How are we to know? Whether they get thrown out or not. Once it's argued in the court, the judge will make a decision, and it will be. I mean, it will be public.
principal. They, you need to have programs to address that. Was that okay. something that your firm is going to address with, with these folks that, if they choose to, to elect to, to go with the firm, are you going to incorporate that in the services? As, as a, yes. Whether the courts here will recognize it, that is going to be a battle. But yes, and not only individually. One of the other things that I've done in other communities is it's not just the individual, the impact on the individual, but also on the community as a whole. Because this community has become stigmatized. And that has an impact on how people feel in their homes, in their lives, in their schools. How they're, oh, you're from a plant. Oh, that's where the water's you know, so it's not just, it's individuals and kids, but it's also asking what happens to a community. And I actually, actually have a chapter in a book that has to do with communities that are impacted on, in that way. I used another community in Times, this was Times Beach, Missouri, involving dioxin, where the entire community had to be relocated. And these are people who lived in Missouri, who lived together for generations. And literally, you know, were uprooted, and you know the, the impact of that. So, yeah, to the extent, is this something that, I'm, as a lawyer, I'm looking at in terms of addressing? Yes. Is can I tell you that it's something that will be compensable and recognized by Michigan courts? I can't guarantee that, because Michigan courts, unfortunately, but will I try to do that? And bring that to the fore, absolutely. Because I think it's, I think it's critical. I think that is the, the silent injury, is the trauma. Well, I know community mental health, as of 2013, started screening individuals for post-traumatic stress disorder. So it is something that is recognized within the community and the mental health community. So, well, my, I, I didn't use the term, but what I did. My whole area of practice as a psychologist, which again was many years ago, was in the area of post-traumatic stress, related specifically to chemical disasters. I mean, that's what I did. Yes, I would like to ask a question about that. Um, post-traumatic stress, I'm sure every last one of us is going to do that. Shouldn't that be incorporated in to the filing also? It, it will. Oh, it will. You mean it's as a yes, whether will it be? Yes. Will the courts recognize it? I I don't know. I think there are also, you know, one of the things that you can do, whether the courts recognize it as a damage that is compensable is one thing. But asking for relief, which is creating programs that address or provide the kind of treatment or just Court services for people experiencing that. Free that is charge. something we can do. Free of charge. It should. Right. No question. It should. Right. Just, so to answer your question, would I build that into a complaint? Yes, I would. Absolutely. I want to know how can we go about. I feel like it's not that I'm trying to cut and run. I'm raising my two grandchildren. Three years old. My six-year-old grandson. Has, is autistic. Now, it's not that I want to cut and run. I think I should be offered some type of relocation. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm the sole supporter of my family. I have to protect my family. And no one ever says anything about, you know, offering us relocation. Those who want to stay fine. But I think we should give, be given more opportunities here. You know, because I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I just don't. Do you own your home? Yes. Have you, have you tried to sell it? I, I, yes, I can't. Yeah. It's worth zero. That. I put a lot of work in my home, too. So that is a damage. Now, relocation is another issue, but, right. but the fact that you can't sell your home, that somebody who, even if they wanted to buy your home, couldn't get a mortgage to pay for it because right. the bank wouldn't give it to them because of the contamination. And I've even so told my that is a damage and that is compensable. So that is something that in a lawsuit is a compensable damage that you could get money for and then you know to make the change in your life that makes sense for you. I've even called my bank and you know I'm honest up, up front. I said now I'm trying not to walk away from this. 
Is it any kind of help you can give me so I can't walk away? Because at this point now, I'm willing to walk away from it. It's just that important to me for my little children. I understand. Right. And what are they saying? Well, they put me on a lot of different lines and on hold and some triage thing. And then all of a sudden, connect is broken. <laughs> oh, we're going to help you. Connect was broken and I couldn't get back into all these people, you know. Because, you know, who in the world for well, years is going to buy you? And you know, it's a scary thing for the simple fact that we have a lot of people coming in here telling us all of this manure. We don't know who to trust. I understand. You know, we're just overwhelming. It look like we're here alone. I feel alone. I do. I feel alone and very confused. And I'm not the tightest person. It is, a, but it is a very confusing. I don't think that's you. I think it's very confusing, and you're getting a lot of different information and not a lot of clear information. And 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 I think one of the biggest issues is the fact that it's not remedy. I mean, it still exists, even though they say well now the, the flood levels are less. The fact is that the infrastructure, the pipes are still there. And well, I think that's one of the things that happens is that people lose a sense of trust and a belief that the government and the regulatory agencies that are there to protect them don't. It's a betrayal. I mean, one of the, it's a betrayal. It feels like betrayal. There are or will be lawsuits filed by different attorneys and that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about consolidation and how that I'm sorry, the what? There, there are or will be many lawsuits filed right. by different attorneys and right. firms. Can you talk a little bit about consolidation? All the lawsuits are consolidated. What, what then happens? Or who's our attorney? You mean what happens? If, if all the lawsuits are consolidated. Well, what happens? I mean, there are lawsuits currently filed in federal court, in court of claims, and I think in state court. So they're, they're filed in three different courts, uh, depending on who is, because some people file just against the state, some people file in NADA, some there's a company, the environmental company, land. Um, so there's, there, lawsuits are filed in three different courts. Will there be some consolidation? I think ultimately there will be some consolidation of the lawsuits, but not if, that they won't. The, the cases, most, there's class actions and then there's individual cases that have been filed. There will be, let me answer that differently. I don't think the cases will be consolidated. What might happen is that the work done on them might be. So in other words, if I represent, you know, 5,000, the 5,000 people that I represent, and, or whatever it is, I still represent those people. But for example, I'm gonna to wanna to take the depositions of some of the people of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Okay, so are the other lawyers. That will be consolidated. The discovery, the information that we're going to be looking for in order to prove up your claims if we're representing you, that's going to be wanting to be done by all the lawyers that are representing people. That will be consolidated, not the cases themselves. Are you filing that against the state of Michigan or are you filing all three courts? Are you filing at all three courts or are you filing against the We have not made a final decision, but we are like we're, we're probably going to file in federal court, which is also here in Michigan, but federal court and in the court of claims, which is the court that you file cases against the state. So we will file in both. I wish I could answer that. Let, let, let me say something, because she, she, she's a little reluctant to ask me, but I'm going to say something from a legal standpoint. I filed the case when I was in the Michigan Department of Correction, and I won a case in the Western District. There's not one attorney in the city of Flint that ever won a case in the Western District. And I won this case by myself when I was in the Michigan Department of Correction.
direction. I won six figures, and they sent me home five months later. Every lawyer I tried to contact told me I didn't have a case, and they wished me good luck. So I went to the law library, and I studied, and I fought against two state attorney generals, and I fought against two wardens, four officers, and one case manager. I fought against all of them. And so let me tell you the time span. It took me three years, normally three years in Flint, well, in Michigan, I said, in Michigan, in the federal court, it normally takes, well, it don't normally, it takes normally three years, but don't make that absolute. Just look at the three years, and if it go past three years, then it go past it. But it normally, at the minimum, takes at least three years, because you got to do discovery, you got to do deposition, deposition is taking an oath, I mean, taking a statement under oath, um, you got a lot of other things they got to do before they even get to the trial. But you got to survive certain hurdles, which is called summary disposition. I mean, you have to prove a genuine issue of material fact in my life. You are right. Okay, all right. You got to prove a genuine issue of material fact. Some people claim it to be. No, I'm not aware. I'm going to law school. I got one class after two that I'm going to include. Um, I know a lot of silver, though. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I know she's reluctant because she's an attorney. So some things she has to keep herself from saying, you know, but I can say it because I've been through it. So normally it takes about three years, you know, they got to do a lot of stuff, but if you survive summary disposition, that's the hardest hurt. That's a genuine issue of material fact. Let me give you an example of what they mean by that. If you and I get in an argument, yet tomorrow I got a big deep scratch on me. A genuine issue, all I got to prove is that you and I really had a confrontation. Now, even though I survived summary disposition, which is a genuine issue of material fact, even though I survived that, the courts are not saying that you're guilty or that you're wrong. They're just saying that it's a genuine issue that can be put in front of a trial. But normally when it gets to that way, it's civil. They never want to go to trial. They settle. Because it costs so much money, and they just say, well, look, if the courts has allowed them to survive summary disposition, more than likely you really won the case. So they had to come and settle. Am I right? Am I making some sense? You are definitely making sense. Okay, I'm gonna let her take over. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. So okay, and we got and we gotta conclude because we got two more presentations. So we do have to conclude it in a minute. Go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say she wanna ask a question. Just ask two more questions. Okay. Two more questions. Because we're past 7 o'clock, unfortunately. But I would love for her to speak all day. But we are on time restraint, unfortunately. I'm looking at the situation. Each day, each day with this egregious situation, we're getting sicker. We don't know when we're going to leave this earth because of this problem. I went to bed one day, woke up, I couldn't walk. I have no life-threatening disease. If you go to Congress and you say you didn't know about this problem in Flint, and you lie, is that you're committing perjury? If you gradually kill the people in this city, slowly kill them with lead, the children, the senior citizens. Isn't that a criminal act if you know about it? Let me just answer. Do I think that what was done is criminal? And not under the criminal law code, I don't practice criminal law. That said, do I think what was done was criminal? I do. If you lie, but I'm not a criminal lawyer. Do I think that, yeah, I mean, look, I don't know about the, I don't know if, who, I'm, I don't know if you're talking about, it's not, you know, who you're talking about, I assume you're I'm talking, talking about, about the proper doctor. Schneider. Right. But I don't think he said he didn't know. Governor. Maybe he said. So, 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 hey, hey, please, everyone give her a round of applause. She came all the way. She gave an excellent presentation. I know she gave a wealth of knowledge.
Because I see people pulling out their pens and notebooks, and I said, that's great. When I see that, I know that there's some good information being disclosed. Thank you very much. So now I have uh, an EPA guy want to come up, and I also want these guys to come up as well. Can you please come? We're going to do this. Okay, thank you, thank you. And so I got an EPA guy here, and I have a crew here that brought this filtration system. This filtration system, they brought it to my house, and they did a test in my house. I put warm water because only warm water can really be tested to see if there's contaminants in the water. So I put warm water in this, and they want to they want to show you this, give a demonstration. This is really excellent. And then after he did the demonstration, he said, "Give me a cup and I'll drink." And he drunk. He drunk the water, and I said, "Give me a cup." And I drunk because if I'm gonna show this to people, I'm gonna drink it too. And so I drunk it, and it tastes better than bottled wine. Well, you make your decision, but I do want you to see this. Well, thank you for coming to our, our uh, segment of this uh, uh, night of information, and we really appreciate the councilman inviting us. Uh, he's done so much for this for this community. Um, we're a water hole, and we're here to show you a a solution that can be taken taken right away. This is this is a an, an interim solution that can happen. Very, very quickly. That's what that's what we're here for. Uh, water World has teamed with Water is Life and Flint H2O uh, for this life-saving technology for people of Flint. We researched the Flint water crisis. We're horrified uh, by the extent of the, the water water contamination here, and also the the less than ideal interim solution of bottled water. I, I think everybody in Flint is very tired of bottled water right about now. Uh, in March of this year, we, we came to Flint and we, we interviewed the people that you saw in the video. And one of the things they told us was they very much appreciated the donations for the bottled water, but also that it was very inconvenient. So we're we're here with the with the water road. We're going to test it. We're going to have you come up and, and, and taste it yourself and, and see what you think. Um, the the other. Part of it is that we hear that the, that the donations are kind of slowing down for bottled water. We were at a, at a residential facility downtown today, and the manager there said it's been three weeks between their, their deliveries of water. So this is a solution that will, will have water on your, your countertop perpetually, as long as you have the machine. Uh, Flay HUO is working uh, on a deployment through schools, churches, and, and civic organizations. We demonstrated the water row uh, to the people of Flint, and there was a big thumbs up on the, the, the tasteful water and, and a, a, a Flint water lab that's going to the purity of the water. And currently, we're going to work with local partner organizations to raise funds to purchase water low at wholesale cost and provide them to the people of Flint. And we are also providing celebrity endorsements uh, for this project. Now here's some, some details about the about the water road system. The parent company of uh, Water Road is the largest supplier of goods to the Home Depot and Costco. Water Row engineers have invested three years to develop the uh, the Water Row reverse osmosis water purifier. Now, the finished product has exceeded all expectations of both high tech design and performance. We have incorporated a digital total dissolved solids meter. So you can see the real-time purity of the water. Uh, throughout, through the patent technology, we also maximize the output, introducing, uh, producing one liter in five minutes. And we have cut the waste of water produced to 20%. Typically, these reverse osmosis systems produce three and a half times the water wasted to what they actually purify. So that results in much lower water balance. And so people ask, what is the reverse osmosis? And the simple answer is, a more technical answer will come from the guy who really knows what reverse osmosis is. But basically, it's, it's purifying drinking water by forcing untreated water molecules through semi-permeable membranes or filters. And the membranes block the contaminants and the impurities are removed, leaving you with the purest drinking water. And 
and it also had the, the carbon filter. There's four filters in, in, in this water purifier. And the carbon filter actually adds flavor to, to the water. So Water Rose's unique recycling system contains the four filters designed to filter and refilter every drop of water as you pour into the machine. It reduces 99.999999, I think six nines to the right of the decimal point, of all impurities. So that's, you can't get too much purer than that. I think that's about as pure as you're going to get for, for water. Uh, and water does not require any installation. It's, it sits on your kitchen countertop. All you got to do is plug it in. It's just like using a drip coffee machine. Uh, so we received many requests for water all from people of Flint and other concerned uh, people from all over the world, actually. And so for the first phase of this project, we are seeking companies and organizations and grants to fund purchase of 5,000 units of the water owed. Uh, and the wholesale cost is $250. These units will be distributed to the areas of Flint that are hit hardest and to the people who are most in need uh, of, of, these, of this purified water that you don't have to open a bottle to get to. Um, so we're going to do a demonstra demonstration now. Uh, Ken from Water is Life is going to take over and show us how it is. And um, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out today. Um, we, uh, we do have a cool system here to show you, and um, I'll uh, see if we get the screen turned off. There we go. Um, what? I told they got to see this. You got to see this in action. Um, what, uh, one of the things that has impressed me uh, being here with the good people of Flint has been the stories and the, 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 the passion that I've heard people um, share their stories with. Uh, with us about. We've uh, had the chance to sit in many family uh, homes and um, be in with uh, some of the senior adults, some of those that are most impacted uh, by this water crisis because they're not able to haul water up the stairs. They're not able to put you know water in their wheelchair. I see some of you in, with crutches and with, uh, with canes here tonight. It's impossible for you to carry water up and down uh, to into your home, even if, though it is inconvenient. Um, this, is, uh, this is a system that uh, provides ultra-purified water um, through a reverse osmosis uh, process. The, there's nothing like it on the market today. It is um, a high-tech uh, device as well. It uh, syncs up with your smartphone. You'll be able to uh, turn it off. You'll be able to see uh, water levels and different quality. And um, it's a, a really cool deal. There's two different uh, TDS meters. Now, TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. And what that shows you is, is the source water is at 237 parts per million. Um, typically, tap water is supposed to be at 50 or less for it to be popped. Okay? And so then you see the output level is at 0 0.05. So it's, it's at uh, 5 TDS for, um, uh, for an individual. Okay. You left me hanging. It's simple to load. Um, it's got a. Uh, yeah, I just need to remove the water. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So I'll do that real quick. Okay. Gotcha. So um, he's got uh, got water uh, in in here. One of the things that you can do with this is you can also select the amount of water that you want to dispense. Um, create uh, clean drinking water on the main. So the water that is inside uh, the tank originally is at 237 um, parts per million. You're going to see the number change because what it's doing is it's taking the dirty water that it, uh, or the impurities out of the water and dumping them back into uh, the reservoir there. This is a water from the toilet. Water from the toilet. All right. No. 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 Say it is so. Right? No. One of the things that, um, that is amazing to me is uh, something so small, so, so compact. Our goal is to raise the funds to put these in 5,000 homes in Flint, Michigan. Um, you can help us out. We for, need free. You, for free. For free. Um, we, want, we need you to, to we sign up. We're selling that. <laughs> yeah, we're not selling it to you. We're giving it to you. That's right. um, we need to see one of these on everybody's uh, household, especially those that are at most risk. We have children, we have senior adults, we have people that are in wheelchairs that desperately need a solution. 
you're taking back the control of your own water by being able to do this. You're not having to depend on somebody coming with a truck, somebody showing up to give a freebie out. You are taking control of your own situation. Can you show them the four filters behind here where they can yeah, see? Yeah, absolutely. If you look at the, this mod, we opened it up on the back here. Four different filters uh, that go through. Um, these filters are, um, uh, the RO filter will last uh, for 12 months. Um, the machine is a smart machine. It's going to tell you when those filters are running out of their lifespan. And so it'll show up on the screen here and show you uh, exactly where that filter is in its lifespan. Diggy, you want to say anything else? Uh, this is the inventor. <laughs> yeah, I'm the CEO and the founder of the Water O. And uh, welcome, because uh, I flagged him uh, two weeks ago. And I found that the whole thing here is really in the presentation. They need someone to help them. So we want to start this campaign to let the national wide people know. Okay. Okay. You have some questions? Yes. How much is the filter? Yeah, the filter uh, for now filter is uh, sixty dollars per set, and uh, that's that's like seven filters. Uh, the usage is two thousand liters for that set of filter. So basically, a family of five can use that for one around one year. So one. like. Yeah. One year and then it will cost me sixty dollars. Sixty. Thank you. For all four. Yeah. Yeah, for all four of the filters. Yeah. No, no. Um, one of the questions too is about uh, the RO filter is designed by GE and um, all of the filters are made here in the USA. Oh yes. Yeah, all the filter system is made in the USA and uh, we are not selling the cheap products and stuff. And of course we we send it free for you guys. And uh, we just want you guys to sign me and that let the whole society know these things. And uh, uh, the, the other people like uh, other charities, like social organizations, will just donate the money for you. So that's like having a false in your house. Right. It's, uh, it's having a water treatment system in your house that will provide all the purified water for you. Bon appetit. That toilet water doesn't taste too bad. No. <laughs> no taste at all. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Hey, I think, can we give them a round of applause? Because they're going to work on bringing 5000 for free. They ain't talking about selling anything. That ain't what we're talking about. Ain't nobody selling that. Nothing today. Okay. Uh, let me get the EPA guy. Thank you very much. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. Man, you did a good job. Thank you very much. Where are we signing up at? Well, Right come, 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 right out here. Yeah, there you go. This is the EPA guy. I guess he's going to give you some information. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Councilman. Yes. My name is uh, Lou Pia. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff for the EPA. I uh, live uh, in Washington, D.C. From Michigan. So uh, I've been back here for the last couple of months trying to talk to as many folks as possible about it. Obviously, this water issue. And so you all have uh, one of our fact sheets. I think it was passed out. And really, I just want to emphasize some of the information that's on there that's really important to make sure that we're, we're staying safe. Uh, filtered water is essential. You have got to have filters, um, and you cannot drink from the tap. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm just learning about the system here. The councilman was raving about it. Um, you know, I, I can't com comment on different types of filter systems, but you have to have one. It needs to be NSF certified. Uh, but what's also just as important is you have to maintain the filter. And so you got to change it out every 30 days um, because uh, they wear it down just, just, just like anything else does. Uh, the last thing I, w I really want to point out is that we are having an open house, and you all have these slides about an open house this Saturday. Um, this Saturday, uh, April the 16th, down at the University of Michigan, uh, Flint, uh, which is the Mott University Center. Um, this will be a one-stop shop to be able to get a lot of your questions answered. I'm not a technical person. You know, I'm not here trying to get some feedback from you all, hear your concerns, take it back to the agency and, and see if we can put it to work. Um, but this will be a, a great opportunity to, to talk to doctors and public health officials, ask your questions, be directed to appropriate resources. So I encourage you all, if you have questions or concerns, to come on Saturday. If you can't come, pass your fly on to somebody else and get them to come because, uh, you know, there's so much, there's so many different elements to this crisis. There's so many different ways that we can all be affected. So I hope to see you all on Saturday. I'll be there. I'll also be out here um, as well once this, once this finishes up. I know time is short. 
And so if you have questions, if there's a way that I can be a resource, uh, come and catch me after this session, and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Can Thank we, you. Can we give him a round of applause? I got one more guy. He's from California. This guy called me every day because he claims that he has some pill that brings heavy metal out of your skin. I mean, out of your, out of your body. Out of your body. So I just want to call him on. Come on. Since we're inviting me here, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Riora. I was called in PX. Louder, please, I can't hear you. Most of you have the brochure and some flyers, some testimonials from the doctor who did the heavy metal test on the cancer patients who have had very excessive toxic heavy metals and how it works as a take in our product. This product has been created for Chernobyl visits originally, initially, and it was tested on radiation, then, they, then it was tested on oncological patients who were going through chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So it kept glucosides within the level at all times, and these are the white cells are responsible for immune system. When they drop, the procedure must be stopped, otherwise the person might die every day. So this product supports the immune system scientifically and clinically proven and documented. I can't search anymore. Then we tested here on cancer patients who have excessive heavy metals every time and also who, who have a deficiency of essential heavy metals such as magnesium, zinc and all the others. It removed every single excessive heavy metal, small percentage within a month, like anywhere from 40 to 100 percent, and those metals that are essential, it brought them up to the level. But it's all documented. We have many documentations, in fact, all of this is all documents to support our claims. It removes toxic heavy metals, period. And what I will suggest is, what I, what I want to ask you all of you is this. You all know, or some of you have taken tests for lead or toxic heavy metals with this water crisis. And by the way, this heavy metal um, problem is not new. It has been for ages. But not only now, it's technology has proven that I'm shown how to detect them, how to measure them, and how to identify them, and how to remove them. That's what we have. Okay, so. Anybody that you know or yourself who have taken tests um, for, for lead, that's the big problem in, in Flint, Michigan, what you will, will do is you will send, even to Mrs. Davis, your consent, it's okay to send it to us, your name and address, and preferably the results what you have. We will send you a free product for one month supply to try it. You try it, and after, after you try it, you will share with us with the results. It's that simple. That way we will be able to help others knowing that it works. Do you understand that? Any questions? Phone number, please. Okay, our phone number is 1866, is both your number. 1866-996-HEALTH. 1866-996-4325. Same thing is with anyone in the area code. 818-996-4325. One more time, a little slower. One more time, okay. 818-996-4325. You got you uh, our, um, hold, hold on a second. They're, they're, they're working with your accent. You got to do it one more time for them, real slow. 818-996-4325. Four, three, two, five. Four, three, two, five. Our website is Folium PX. F O L I U M P X. I have it on my phone. Dot com. I have it. I have it. I have it. Okay. Yeah, I have it. I'll give it to you now. You got to be in the face around. Stand by. Any questions? Oh, it's on the hand out. Okay. Any questions? Okay. They got your number. Thank you for your...